Hello everyone, Tina here. I hope you're having a fabulous day. Thank you so much for joining me. Well, today I get to share with you three cards with the Hero Arts My Monthly Hero Kit for March 2020. This month's kit is super fun. I haven't created with the Hero Arts kits for a while and I've gotten so many requests that I thought we'd make three cards today. First, we're going to take a look at the kit contents and then we're going to jump in and create some cards. Um, this is a six by eight stamp set with kind of a Japanese Zen kind of a garden feel. Super pretty. I fell in love with it and I cherry I've also fell in love with the cherry blossom tree. Um, this kit does come with five frame cuts and one of those will actually cut out the background, um, the grassy hillside to create your little Zen park kind of a theme. Um, you can see here it just fits right over that. Now the neat thing about this set is it's a two-step layering set. So your cherry blossom tree, your grassy area here is a two-step um, image. You also get um, one two-step image that could be used for like a little pond or it could be used for a little gravel area. And then you also get two pagoda um, lanterns. Super pretty. Um, the, the pagoda lanterns are actually in two different sizes, which is nice too. And then your tree trunk is separate from the blossom area of the tree. So those are your five frame, frame cuts. And I am so looking forward to playing with this. You get a sentiments that say thank you. Um, live life in full bloom, thinking of you. Stop and smell the blossoms, which I thought was so pretty and inspiring. Now in this kit, you get some pink puff. <laughs> when I first saw this, I thought, wow, this is a very neon pink. Um, cherry blossoms are usually very soft. And I thought that's an interesting embossing powder for, for this kit. Um, I thought I'd share with you the color of it. So I inked it up with my Versamark ink added some of that embossing powder and you know what guys it turns into the most beautiful color it is a soft pale pink but it puffies just slightly it adds texture to anything that you emboss um if you press on it it will flatten in fact i kind of did a boo-boo um i would actually heat emboss with this after you die cut your images um you can see the difference here between the hot pink and then the soft pink how it pulls back that color so nice but I die cut after I had heat embossed, so I kind of smushed it a little bit. Um, but it's super neat stuff. You get three sheets of the Hero Hues Premium Cardstock. You get the green is Kiwi, you get the blue, which is Mist, and then you get the pink, that's Peony. You get um, two of each in half sheets, which are five and a half by eight and a half. And then you also get five ink cubes, and that's perfect because um, you get two different shades of pink, two different shades of green, and then you also get a real pretty blue. I'm going to just kind of swatch them out so you can see the colors and how gorgeous they are. This is the darker pink, and then you get the lighter pink, and that's great for the cherry blossom area of your tree. And then you also get this real pretty blue, which is good for your little water area for your little park. You also get two shades of green. You get a lighter one and a darker one. So nice little juicy little mini e cubes, perfect for your images. The top one here is real pretty color called Rose Matter. Then you get Cotton Candy, Dusty Blue, Green Hills, and Field Greens. So super pretty ink colors, perfect for your layering. So I'm gonna put everything aside. That's everything in the kit. And then we're gonna create three, three fun cards. We're gonna do a lot of stamping. So I'm gonna bring in um, my stamp positioner. I have the um, Hero Arts and My Sweet Petunia um, brand new um, Mini Misty. I love the black. I think it it looks very sharp on my craft desk. <laughs> kind of like, um, I just like new things. How about you? <laughs> but uh, I love the, the black regalness of this. Okay, we have some cardstock inside the Misty Mini Misty here. And we're going to start off with our first layer. We're going to do some grassy areas. Um, I placed it at the bottom. I'm going to pick it up with the lid of the Missy. And then I'm going to bring in my lightest green ink, which is Green Hills. And it is a nice and juicy ink pad, so I have no problem going over the solid image. We're going to stamp that. And then um, transfers beautifully. And you know what, guys? If you were to let this dry, you see how blotchy it is? It will smooth out. That's the nice thing about the Hero uh, inks. Um, they, they stay up blotchy, but they dry nice and smooth. So that's one layer, and you can see I have a little bit of some rock detail there. 
I'm just going to clean off my background here and then we're going to grab layer number two. Layer number two is going to add some more grassy little details to our little um, green area here. We're going to, it's so easy to line up, just place it right on top. And then for this one, we're going to use the darker green, the green, um, the field greens. We'll just ink this up and we'll stamp this a few times as well. This adds the nice little hillside um, kind of garden look and it actually adds a lot of dimension too. Um, I thought we'd do two of these for our projects today. So I did the same exact thing. I just flipped over my panel and then did the same thing with the two shades of green and the inks. So that one's ready to go. Now we're going to bring in another piece of white cardstock and we're going to create some trees. Lots of cherry blossom trees. Um, I'm going to just clean off this and then we're going to grab the tree trunk and then we're also going to grab um, the most solid image for the blossom part of the tree. Just tucking that in the corner, making sure it's put and then we are going to ink up the tree trunk with a brown ink. This is Cup of Joe. This is a little mini Hero Hue and um, this one didn't come in the kit um, but I thought a brown ink would look good. We're going to stamp it a few times and then for the cherry blossom tree we are going to stamp that or we're going to ink it up with our cotton candy which is our lightest pink. With the layering stamps you want to, I'll always like to start with the lightest ink with the most solid image. So light and solid go together. And then the more sparse second layer, you would want to go in with your second layer of ink. Um, since this is just two-step, it makes it really easy. I just flipped my panel over. We're going to do the exact same thing with a cup of joe and then also the cotton candy. So we're going to, we're actually going to stamp four of these total with the same colors. We're going to grab another piece of white cardstock and then do the same exact thing. That's the nice thing about the layering stamps. You can just keep them in the misty. We'll just stamp our tree trunk. And then we'll go ahead and add our cotton candy. And stamp that. Yes, I've had a lot of requests um, to, to create with the Hero Arts kits. And sometimes I get a little bit busy. At, and um, my kits have just been piling up on my desk and I thought you know what this one is just so gorgeous um, in California when I was younger they had a real beautiful garden well let me tell you what I'm doing here I'm taking that cup of joe and I'm going around the edges of the most solid um, outline after I added the cotton candy so you can see it gives me my, my, my two-tone look with that brown um, I like that so much that we're going to do that again um, in just a little bit I'm just going to clean off my stamp. We're going to grab our second layer and this time we're going to use the darker pink but we're just going to do the darker pink on this um, brown edged blossom and I think that looks I think that looks great. So so far we have um, the darker pink is the rose matter that's in the very top of the panel here. Now for the bottom one remember we have three more of these. I'm going to treat it um, the most solid area of the blossom tree with my anti-static power tool and then I'm going to go over my second layer with regular Versamark ink. Um, I thought we would do some heat embossing with that pink puff. I wanted to see what it does on, on the pink. So I'm going to stamp this and then I'm going to grab some scratch paper and we're going to um, add our pink puff um, embossing powder. This adds a uh, texture, um, kind of like your walls kind of have. <laughs> I don't know how else to explain it, but that's what this does. I thought that was so neat. Um, I just added it and then now I'm going to use my heat gun and we're going to melt it and you can see the color change. It goes from that, that hot pink to that beautiful soft pink and it, it has a little bit of dimension. Now I would suggest um, die cutting out your first layer first and then adding your embossing powder because I ran it through my die cut machine after I, um, I did this and I think I kind of smushed it a little bit. We're going to do the exact same thing with the other two trees and then I did um, another pink tree and then a green tree using the light green ink which is the green heels um, and I did the brown edge with my cup of joe like I did um, the very first one. 
um, we're just going to put this back in the misty and then um, with these colors I thought we would do something a little different you know I'm just playing around with different kind of trees so I'm adding my second layer with my Versamark ink flipping my panel over we're going to add some more Versamark ink but instead of adding the pink puff I thought we would add a white embossing powder and so we're going to bring in my white embossing powder and go over um, the blossom part image here and then we're just going to tap off the excess and I thought this turned out super neat. I think the sky's the limit with these trees. I think they're just gorgeous. Um, I love the way the white looked with a, the brown edge and then the colored background. In fact, I did a blue one using the blue ink in the kit, the dusty blue, uh, the same exact way, guys. So I have a green, a pink, and a blue with a white embossing power used with the second layer. But I just think it's very interesting and love the way they look. <laughs> So that's done. Okay, now we are going to add another piece of white card. We're gonna do all of our stamping at once. I wanted to grab the um, the little pond area and we'll place that um, in the middle because this is gonna be our panel. I'm gonna use a die to, to trim it down, but I just wasn't sure where to position it. So I put it in the middle. I'm gonna ink up the main part of this with my dusty blue and then for the second layer, I'm going to um, make sure it's dry here and then I want to heat emboss that with white embossing powder. So I'm treating it with my anti-static powder tool and then we'll take our second layer, add that. The second layer has kind of like ripples. Um, I think this could be a little water lake pond for your Zen garden or it could be a little path or a trail. And then I'm going to go over this with my white embossing powder and just melt it. So that's ready to go. Okay, now we're going to take the coordinating dies and die cut out our blossom trees and our trunks and our grassy backgrounds. And then um, we're going to have lots of trees and backgrounds and we're going to create three cards with it. Okay, <clears throat> I added the blue one. We're not going to use the blue one for my first card, but I'm just using it kind of like a spacer. Um, we're going to bring in that pond once more, but this time I'm going to ink this up with um, a soft granite ink. This is a Hero Hue and it's a light gray. I stamp that and then I'll take my second layer and I'm going to use my Cup of Joe for the second layer. I want to kind of create a, a garden path with this, so I'm using a brown ink for this one. We'll just ink that up and then stamp that right over the top. It's very easy to line up. And I love the way that looks. Now in the stamp set, there is some little like gravel and, or some rocks. Um, I'm gonna take that. Um, hindsight, I'm thinking that this might coordinate with the rocks that are on your grassy area up there, you could see. But I'm just gonna use them as little gravel pieces. So I'm inking that up with a darker ink. This is a charcoal ink. It's a little mini hero hue. And we'll stamp that. And there's two little rocks. And you know what, guys? The rocks layer two. <laughs> so we're going to stamp a few of those. We're going to take both of those rocks and stamp them around the tree. And you're going to use both our shades of gray. Again, the lightest shade of gray is um, soft granite. So we'll ink up the most solid image with the light gray ink. Stamp that a few times. Just around our little area and then I'll take the other rock in there, the most solid area, and then we're going to um, stamp the second layer with the darker ink, which is the charcoal ink right over the top. And then we have some cute little rocks. Well, I don't know if they're cute, but we have some nice little rocks. <laughs> okay. Next, I'm going to go ahead and I have the little pagoda lanterns. We're going to, I'm going to take my paper that I use. It's Nina 80, 80, 80 pound cardstock. It die cuts beautifully. So I'm just using the scratch piece here and I'm going to stamp a few of my little statues um, with my lightest gray ink, which is again soft granite. And then I'm going to do the detail layer with the charcoal ink, which is a darker gray ink. And once you, it doesn't look like much now, but you'll see it just comes to life with that second layer. It's amazing what a second layer will do. 
Um, and I'm doing both the small and the, the large lantern here. Now watch, you stamp this and boom, it looks so much like a little pagoda lantern. So sweet. <laughs> and they're easy to, super easy to line up, guys. Okay, I did that to the small ones and I die cut it out. Okay, so our panel is ready to go. We're going to go ahead and use this tree here. I'm going to add some glue behind our branch or our tree trunk. And then we're going to adhere that to the blossom area of the tree. I think that looks gorgeous. Okay, after we have that done, I decided we're going to take some um, of the uh, Hero Arts Infinity Dice. These are the rounded rectangles. Um, I thought we would use that um, to create our background panel. Um, before I die cut it out though, I'm just using the ink that's left over on my blending brush here and adding a slight shade of blue just to kind of give it a little bit of color in the background. And then we'll take our die and just line it up and then die cut out our panel. This is going to leave me about a half of an inch around my entire card base. Um, as I did that, I thought we'd do the same thing to the grass. Um, so I used the same die that I used for my panel and just placed it over my grassy area on the bottom. That way it coordinates and has that same um, uh, rounded corner. I'm going to add my tree, which I already popped up with foam adhesive. We're going to kind of reposition our little lanterns. And after I did this, I thought, oh goodness, I forgot to stamp my sentiment. Um, so we're going to do that right now. <laughs> I chose thinking of you and I wanted to stamp it in the green grassy area. Um, so I stamped it and it stamped um, pretty good. I think um, I think I can get away with, um, the T was a little bit thick, but I think it was okay. So um, I stamped the sentiment and then now we're going to pop this panel up and then I'm going to place this on a standard A2 size card base. I chose a white one for this card. Um, Oh no, I chose a green one. Um, I placed it on the green one and then decided I didn't like it. Um, I didn't like the color. It wasn't kind of doing, it, it, it didn't really showcase my Zen garden. <laughs> so what I'm gonna end up doing is um, replacing that. But I thought we would add a little detail to our cherry blossom tree. So I'm using some Simply White Nouveau uh, Crystal Drops and just dotting it. It's gonna give my blossom some dimension and also some extra color back there. And then I'm gonna bring in a little bit of glitter too. I used some Ranger Diamond Stickles. So it has a little bit of sparkle. And then here's where I'm gonna replace my background. And I think it just makes it pop with the white background. I liked it a lot better. So that's card number one. Now we're gonna work on card number two. Um, I'm going to go ahead and kind of line up my grassy background um, close to um, my little pond as I can. And then I'm going to bring in a die from my stash. This is from Hero Arts and it's called the Wood Frame Die. It's an infinity die set. Super neat. It die cuts out a frame um, that has a wood grain um, detail on it. So nice. I'm going to add a little bit of my dusty blue ink to my background just like I did for my first card and then we're going to pop up our little grassy area and place that on the bottom and then I'm using the piece that goes in the center of my frame so this uh, center piece is going to just fit snugly right in the center um, window there and then I'm going to use just two of well two on the left of the cherry blossom trees that we used with the pink puff. Um, I didn't add the tree trunk because you couldn't see it, but then I put one towards the right also. Now this panel is going to go on an A2 size white card base. And I love the way that looks. And you can see I stamped the sentiment that says live life in full bloom. And then um, after we have that in here, I did add bells and whistles. I did add a little bit of the diamond stickles to um, the blossom area for a little sparkle. And that finishes off that card. Now, my next card is super, super easy, but I love how these trees turned out. So I just wanted them to shine on my card. I'm going to flip. I already added the trunks just using some glue. Now I'm going to add some foam tape behind them. And then I have a panel here that is um, slightly smaller than my card base. 
It actually measures four inches by five and a quarter. I'm gonna place them two upside down on top and then one right side up, kind of wonky in a triangle pattern. And then in that bottom area is where we're gonna stamp our sentiment. I'm just gonna trim off the excess that's overhanging real fast. And then I since we had a lot of that brown on the edges, I thought we would bring in the cup of joe ink. My sentiment for this card, I chose um, stop and smell the blossoms. So we'll just grab our little mini ink cube, ink that up, and stamp that in the bottom corner. I think this one's my favorite card. Even though it's so simple, it just looks so detailed. Okay, we're gonna flip this panel over. I am gonna add a foam adhesive to it. I'm gonna adjust this one just a bit, just so it's kind of evenly spaced. And then we'll just trim off the excess a little bit more, flip it around and trim. And then I'm happier with that outcome. Okay, we're gonna add foam adhesive and then this is gonna go on the peony cardstock. I just folded it in half and then scored it to create my card base. So we're just gonna add this. Lovely. And then we're gonna go over um, our cherry blossoms with, again, the diamond stickles, just for just a subtle shimmer. And that finishes off that card. Super easy, but nice little options. Just using the inks in the kit. I think they're just gorgeous colors. <laughs> So here's all three cards that I made today with the Hero Arts My Monthly Hero Kit for March 2020. I think it's such a pretty kit and um, I hope you enjoyed. Thank you so much for joining me guys. I wish you a lovely day and we will see you again real soon. Bye bye.